All right, hey everybody, welcome back to another video. It's your old buddy, Double G, and it is a Thursday night. It is fantasy football draft night. I'm a huge Bears fan, and uh, I guess for those of you that maybe this is your first time here, hey, welcome, and thanks for stopping by the channel. I'm Garrick. I'm 58, been doing photography since I was 16 years old, and about a year ago, almost to the date, I was relieved of my duties in the insurance industry after a 30-year career. So now, I am driving a school bus in my local community, loving every minute of it, and uh, doing as much photography as I can. So. Welcome aboard and uh, hit the old subscribe button if if you like what you see and that would help me out quite a bit Especially these days <laughs> So today uh, What I want to do is kind of go through a couple images with you guys uh, one of you viewers suggested I walk through a couple images on uh, using Nick effects I never get that right, but um, it's that Google, I think it's a Google product, N-I-K, and it's got a whole suite of software within it. And what I usually use is Silver Effects Pro or Color Effects Pro and sometimes Analog Effects Pro. So I think tonight I want to just go through a couple images. So we'll do that. I recently went into the city of Aurora. Uh, dusk shoot just kind of walked around the city a little bit through my drone a little a very little and uh, took a few images and and I'll walk you through how I use uh, Silver FX Pro and Color FX Pro It's not meant to be a tutorial. I'm not claiming to be any kind of uh, expert at all. It's just how I do it and Hopefully you guys get something out of it and if you do let me know and if uh, there's something I'm missing or uh, anything you can add to it, please do that in the comments. That helps everybody. So uh, with that, let's go. All right, so here we are within Lightroom. This is one of the images that uh, I picked out. You can see down below the whole series of images. What are there? In this set, there's 28, but uh, I just wanted to, it's actually two I was looking at. This one, or this one I think I like this one a little bit more so we're gonna do this I'm kind of seeing this in a black and white a little bit but I love these colors and tones here in the top of this uh, pedestrian walkway obviously love the birds it just gives it some character and some feel and a little life to the image so obviously you can see there's no sky going on we could do something with that if we wanted to in Photoshop but I am not a big sky swap guy if you are that's fine I'm just not too much into it um, all right so I'm going to just do a quick process here and so I'm in Lightroom just gonna, just to get a starting point I'm just gonna hit auto and then white balance i'm going to use auto as well but that's actually not too bad uh a little warmer yeah that's better so um open up the highlights a little open up shadows just a touch out there now I'm going to check my whites and my blacks and to do that I'm holding the option key I'm on a Mac holding the option key until you just start to see some color break through and then I back it off a little bit I'm going to do the same thing with the blacks but you can go take the blacks a little bit further in my opinion so that's a little too contrasty for me. Back that off. All right. 
give it a touch of clarity. You can see up here I shot this with my 7200 2.8 lens. And I was at 5.6. Eh, it was getting, you know, the sun was pretty much down at, the, at that point. ISO 400, I probably don't need to do any denoise. But we'll click on it just to give it a quick peek. It's going to give you a preview of before and after. So this is what it looks like now. And once I left click here. Oh, I'm sorry, I got it backwards. So this is the enhanced view. And that's without. So we're not going to do anything. It's fine. I'm going to check the box for remove chromatic aberration and as well as enable uh, profile corrections. You can see it brings up the lens profile right here, which is kind of cool. And I typically, I try to use auto when I do this transform. This puts everything in the right perspective and gives you straight lines. Um, if I'm doing real estate, if I'm doing architecture, I do it uh, manually. Maybe that would be a good video to show you guys sometime. So yeah, so this is cool. And now I'm going to crop it. Oops. I'm seeing this kind of in a 16 by 9. And I want to, I want to crop it so this is out but at the same time I kind of like this part here in the middle so I don't think I'm going to be able to pull that off I want to put this bird right here right there on this where these lines meet upper third so we're going to have to Crop it in a little bit. I guess as long as he's on this line, then we can put these guys right here on this line. Can I actually bring it down a little bit too. I kind of like that better. All right, bingo. And. One thousandth of a second shutter speed, and I still have a little movement. Maybe the focus is just off a touch. I think it probably is, but we'll keep going. This is just an exercise anyway. It's not for anybody's portfolio or anything like that, so keep on rolling. It's kind of a cool image. I've fallen in love with this pedestrian walkway. It's pretty cool. Just all the patina copper here. Just, uh, yeah. Anyway, all right. So, edit. So, I, I don't know if you notice. I right click here, just anywhere on the image. I'm going to go to edit in. Then I'm going to come down here. Let's do color effects pro let's see what we can do with that and just so you know this is this is live this has not been rehearsed i am uh out on the tightrope here so <laughs> hopefully hopefully color effects pro will work sometimes it's got a little bug in it um and we might be a little buggy oh there's my fantasy football stuff don't look at that i have the fourth pick in the draft and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do it's a PPR league for those of you that play fantasy football why is this not working let's try it again all right so now we are in the color effects pro 4 menu right now I'm on my favorites over here on the left hand side but uh, well, this video would be super long if I took you through all of them. So, we'll just uh, hit the ones that I'm thinking about using. The first one is like brilliance and warmth. I'm also thinking about contrast. Also thinking about something to bring the coolness of the uh, roof on this out. So, but anyway, you go into, I'll take you back. So, 
Here's the list. Brilliance and warmth. Contrast. Color range. Contrast. Fog. Foliage. So on and so forth. I guess these are not my favorites. These, this is, I'm under nature right now. So. Now we're in all. You can see how many different ones there are. The ones that are starred are my favorites. So I'm just going to go back there. Brilliance and warmth. Oops. So within brilliance and warmth, there's a few. This is neutral. Increased saturation. I find that's usually a little off the charts. You get like colors that uh, just are not, you know, completely realistic. The perceptual saturation. There's two of those, and I. I you use those quite often, if not the cool or the warm. So this is not bad. This is not too bad here. This is cool. That's a little too cool for my liking. Warm is not bad. Gives it kind of a rustic, rustic look. So, okay, we'll go with that. What the heck. And then, to go back to the filters, you just click this back button up here. And my other favorite that I use is uh, Vignette Lens. Add a vignette to it. Now, because the sky is so basically blown out, um... This might not be good, and you can see here in the previews that it's not going to be. Uh, yeah, that's awful. So, this is probably not the best image for this demonstration. I also find that bleach bypass is will give you an interesting look. This one's kind of cool. So yeah, so we'll stick with this. So I'm gonna click save. And this is gonna when I save it here, it's gonna shoot it right back over to Lightroom. And it's right down here. You can still make some changes to it if you wanted to in Lightroom. Um, but nope, we're good. We are good there. And let's see what else do we have. Alright, so now we're going to move on to this image here. This is one from a recent video I did down at Mathiasen State Park, um, right next door to Starved Rock State Park. If you ever cruising through central Illinois, it's worth a stop, uh, both of them. It's probably the most, if not the most, one of the most beautiful places in the, in the Midwest by far. So. Um, I've already processed this image. This was part of my video that I had out and just going to kind of take you through the same process, but we'll use Silver Effects Pro this time. So I'm going to right click on it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm going to right click on it and we're going to go down to Silver Effects Pro. It says it's preparing the file for editing and Silver Effects Pro should pop up. There it comes. This is real time. So, um, it always defaults to this neutral here. And honestly, the neutral does not look too bad. I have a couple favorites that I like to use quite often here. Fall Dynamic uh, Smooth is one of them. It's not bad. Definitely needs some vignetting or burn the edges in around. 
uh, but we'll look around a little bit. So this is, it's really, I mean, this is how simple Silver FX Pro is. I mean, you can change all these things, but if you find something that you like, it's canned, it's, I mean, it's almost as simple as using Instagram filters, and I've never even used Instagram filters, but it seems like that would be something that's pretty simple, and uh, this is, but again, you can tweak everything, so you can go to town on it if you wish. So there's fine art. I like that. I could see this with the a vignette. This is full dynamic, smooth. This one's actually called wet rocks, and we have wet rocks here. A little too contrasty for me, but some people might enjoy that. Dark sepia. Ooh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Kind of like that one. Another one I like to use is Dark Glow. And Dark Selenium. Dark Selenium comes with a this little border, but it also comes with grain in it. In, you can find the grain down here. Um, I like to move that up to 500 right there and grain hardness. I put it right in the middle, zero. And I would take this border off is what I usually would do. And there you go. That's uh, dark selenium. That's not bad. I don't know that I would even add anything to that as far as vignetting or burn the edges so you get those options down here you can do lens fall off this is you have three sections of lens fall off one two and three is that kind of an image you know that you would definitely I like it darker just because of the subject matter but we're going to turn that off, turn the vignetting off, and so this works for me. going to turn the vignetting off, or it's already off, and uh, hit apply, which is basically save, and this will send it right back in to Lightroom. So there we are with the finished image. Hit uh, full on it so that's two images and nick effects hopefully that's the right name and uh hopefully you got something out of that and if you did please let me know and like i said before if i'm messing something up or if i'm not explaining it properly let me know in the comments i appreciate that and like i said also it helps everybody out so with that, I am your very old and tired and broken down buddy, Double G, and you all know the drill. Like it if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. With that, everybody, we will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>